Hello everyone and welcome to Universe Sandbox 2. My main intended experiment today is to see what would happen if a star passed through the solar system varying the star's mass, approach distance, and velocity. Since this is a live stream though, I'll take your recommendations about what I should try as well. I have my notepad in front of me and will jot your ideas down. If you have some other ideas that you want to try out, I'll just put them down there and we'll do them in sequence. But there's plenty to consider when it comes to sending stars through. Um, especially since I have to remember how to do this. I've paused it for now while I try and figure this out. Edit mode. Add. Okay, I want a star. I want something... let's start off with something around our sun style, right? Um, tough thing is it always wants to put it into an orbit, but we don't want an orbit. Uh, but I'll, I'll plop it down, let's say 100 astronomical units. Seems to want to go in that direction, alright. Um, let, let's start out at 100 astronomical units. Uh, no, I don't have moons in this simulation. We're gonna keep it simple f like that so we can run it at a good speed. Okay, uh, we don't want to add anymore. I do want to edit the sun and I want to in particular make it go faster. At least this time. So, we put it at 100 astronomical units. Um, yeah, uh, actually, let's put it at this junction here. On the grid. And I'm going to increase its speed, motion, total velocity, and I'm going to say, let's see, see what 10 kilometers per second, oh, uh, is that different? Okay, that'll send it going like that. No, I want to, uh, is it a way to turn it around? I want it to pass by on a tangent. Well, uh, let's move it to a location where uh, that that'll do. Uh, let's let's pass it by like this then. Okay, so are we ready? I'm going to go for 30 days per second, and let's see what happens. Uh, we want to see what happens to the planets during this. It's not very fast, but the longer it takes to get around, the more influence it'll have. Maybe we can go a little bit faster here. I'm not entirely clear what the line is. Do you, do you guys know what the line is in this? Probably it's poles? Well, uh, okay. Uh, so, alright. The sun has one. Alright. really don't need to see its poles. It's... Okay, uh, I think we're starting to see some things... See what Saturn is up to. Saturn's a uh, old favorite. Twenty-nine point six is about what it usually has. Well, the sun is definitely sort of trending towards it, so that's a positive. You can see we're sort of moving along in this direction. The planets don't seem particularly per perturbed yet. Even these little uh, objects on the outside aren't... Well, some of them seem to be getting pulled, but not very much. Maybe we need something a lot heavier. Uh, show magnetic axis. Off. On. It's actually off right now. Hmm. Okay, hold on. Uh, how about Uranus? Well, its oral period is changing. Periapsis distance is changing. How's Earth doing? Ah, uh, come on, let me. Oral period is 1.02 years now. So it's it's quite different now. It's got an apoapsis distance of 1.14. Well, Mars is how's Mars doing? It's not changing too much. The other sun is now basically past our system, but if we take a look at orbits, 
Wow, things have changed. Uh, Neptune's orbit is very different now. Uranus is crossing in within the orbit of Saturn. Yeah, hold on. Let me... Since they didn't really provide music, let me get some other music going. Uh, so, uh, music enabled, forget it. Okay. Let's get some good old-fashioned Kevin McCloud music, at least. Unfortunately, I don't have it configured for uh, Kevin McCloud credit, so this is music by Kevin McCloud from Incompetech.com. The other sun has passed by and left our solar system a bit different. The inner planets, uh, Earth... Okay, hold on, let's slow things down a little bit. No, I mean, Earth has changed. Look at it. And it's now very much closer to Venus on one end and much closer to Mars on the other. It's got an orbital period of 1.02 years. Its periapsis is closer to the Sun. Its apoapsis is further away. Mars... Mars is a bit different, but not too much. I mean, I don't remember its numbers very easily. Venus hasn't changed, Mercury hasn't changed very much, um, but uh, Jupiter... Jupiter's pretty much where it usually is. Saturn... Saturn has changed, its orbital period is only 27.1 years now. We have uh, Uranus over here, Uranus has uh, decided to get a very different orbit. It's now extremely elongated with a periapsis distance of 4.38, which is within the orbit of Jupiter, and 18.4 on the apoapsis. And Neptune is now crossing within the orbit of Saturn. We passed by... Uh, uh, there, there was a sun passing by at a distance of greater than... Well, it was about 66 at its closest. Where is that sun now? Where'd it go? Oh, there it is. There, it, it was just on a pass like this. The Our sun decided to come closer to it. See what Earth's climate is now, okay. Surface temperature is 27.2, which is hotter than normal. Greenhouse effect is basically what it is. Surface pressure, a little bit low. Alright, Earth still looks fine. Did Pluto escape? Yeah, I, I, I'll check that in a sec. So, Earth looks pretty much fine. The deserts are where you expect it to be. Where is Pluto? Oh, there's Pluto. I'm, I'm having a star pass through our solar system is the experiment I'm running. And Pluto did get flung out. Pluto is on escape after 90 years. So the all the Kuiper Belt objects have been flung all over the place. That sun is still pretty close. Let's let's warp a little bit more. And uh, so I'm going to say 60 days per second again, so 2 months. Because our sun is actually trying to get closer to it now. It's just a normal sun. It's just one solar mass, but it's already changed the system so that it looks like this. Well, uh, these, <laughs> well, Uranus and Neptune and Saturn might eventually have something happen over here. Over the long run, as long as they're not in harmonic orbits or anything, they might get captured by each other or actually, you know, get into very close influence with each other there. Pluto's over here. Uh, collisions should be enabled, but I, uh, in real life, unless you're really aiming to have things collide, this guy is now looking like it's... Even though we put it on a tangent away from the sun, it looks like it's heading in. Our sun... Well, I don't know. Let's go back to trails. 
Oh no, oh no, it's going up that way. It's okay, it was passing by here. Our sun has been going this way. Uranus seems to be making quite a turn there. We should have put the oncoming sun at a greater inclination to see what happens like that. Maybe that's another thing we should vary. But okay, it's been 113 years. That guy's on his way out. And this is our solar system now. Still wondering if Uranus, Saturn, and Neptune will eventually meet each other, but I don't think I have the patience to find out. They're still on very long orbits. Uh, 40 almost for Uranus, uh, 27.1 for Saturn, and then 60.9 for Neptune, though that's much quicker than it used to be at. So we've neglected the moons because I just wanted to make sure my processor could handle this at great speeds and still do the simulation well. We I think we've got fairly accurate simulation going here. Okay, let's let's try something a little bit different. Let's try something a little bit closer. And then we'll try something bigger after that. Okay, so I'm gonna open the sim again. Same old sim. Okay, this is how things start out. Let's view orbits just from the start and then maybe we'll see how things are and I want to add the Sun again and we'll uh, we'll have it come closer now, well let's let's have it touch the orbit of Pluto here uh, now it's it's properly getting perturbed by the Sun and it's touching the orbit of Pluto but let's start out a little bit further out because that determines how much influence it has. If we just start out really close, it's not going to have as much influence. Influence uh, takes time. Okay. You'd like to see me try and figure out a way to have Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Jupiter collide with one another, combining into a single orbit, but out near the orbit of Pluto. Well, colliding, I don't know, will push their orbit out I guess it's possible let's let's take a look at trails actually right now just see where things are tending Pluto doesn't have much of a trail at all hmm Pluto's uh, Pluto's goners I think eventually uh, the Kuiper Belt objects yeah, I'll be attempting to make my own solar systems. We're just doing some experiments here. There, there goes Pluto. I'm surprised. It, it, the outer planets were more perturbed previously. Hold on, let's slow things down a bit. I think we're going too fast through this part. Let's see... Uh, yeah, uh, Earth is partially lit. You can see the dark region of Earth is actually just a line there. It's a little bit more complicated here, but it's not lit 180 degrees anymore. You can see how it is. Okay, it's about at, cl at closest approach to the sun right now. Looks like uh, Saturn definitely survived. Actually, the other planets survived much better than they did last time. I didn't expect that to happen. Uh, they seem to be less perturbed. Stars traveling much faster than before. I, well, we've set to the same... Let's see. We set to 11 kilometers per second last time, and it was 11 kilometers per second this time as well, Code Fantastic. So I don't know. Do you think now we'll see see some effect? Well, we'll continue to pay attention to it. I, I think I started it out too far away, too. I mean, uh, we've already covered 328 years. Yeah, I'm, I'm very surprised by this result. I wonder if there's something I did wrong, actually. Let's start the the invading sun 
closer so that we don't have to wait too long. Time step is too slow? Well, I can up it if you like. I, I made it slow for increased accuracy while the sun was coming close. Alright, let's start a new one. So, what do we think? Um, let's just start it off. Here's the thing. I want the parameters that will cause a serious perturbation in Saturn's orbit. So we're going to add a body, and we're just going to add another sun. We're not going to go for anything larger yet. We're going to start out a little bit closer this time. I think I started out too far away. Um, okay, now it at least shows me the distance. I'll go for 200 AU. Throw it at Saturn. No, min no, uh... It has to be a question mark. It has to be a question mark, Arthur. I want to find the minimum... Uh, the So, last time we did 10 kilometers. And that didn't work out for us. And we did it like this. Let's say I did 5 kilometers per second. Doesn't change its trajectory too much. Yeah, but they didn't seem as perturbed as they were the first time, Mikko. I want to find the minimum point, the, the point where, the borderline point. I want to find the borderline case where Saturn is flung out. How about that? That's, that's what I want to find. The borderline case where Saturn is flung out by this. Or seriously perturbed enough to, like, get captured by it. Bring it in closer? Well, let's try making it slower first. And then I'll bring it in closer. Uh, so I've cut it to half the velocity it had before. Let's start it out. And then I'll bring it in closer next. And we'll go uh, two months per second first. Uh, maybe... Well, it's slower now, so about six months per second. Uh-oh, wait a minute. We've left... Why is this sun still here? What? Hey, I restarted the simulator. Why is this sun here? Oh, I accidentally got an extra sun. No, no, no. Hold on. Uh, hopefully that didn't change you guys too much, did it? Mm. I think I accidentally put a sun there for some reason. Yeah, yeah. I, I figured that out eventually. I double clicked. Don't worry, got rid of it. And it doesn't look like uh, the orbits were too bad off. Actually, uh, Pluto's might have been pulled a little bit this way because I believe it crosses in closer than Neptune's orbit, but uh, it didn't quite do that. Um, I think its track is actually getting closer than expected. If you can take a look at the line here, we're coming within the orbit of Uranus, I think. I think, because uh, the sun has moved towards it. If we take a look at the trails, our sun has moved towards it. And so it's actually passing closer now. Well, I think this has a better chance of uh, expelling Saturn here. So let's try this again. Same, same sort of bet. So I want to know whether you think Saturn will be flung out by this, given the fact that it seems to be passing within the orbit of Uranus. Well, nothing has happened yet. Except Pluto seems to have a track going like this eventually, so I don't know. Is this for my new novel? You mean things passing close to the stars? Not quite. Uh, eventually I'll be building systems for my various story ideas, but that's not what this is. What's that huh, for, Aaronim? Okay, good, that Lord Root. If I can, I will be there. Um, okay, Kuiper Belt objects are definitely... Hold on, let's... It, it's getting close, so let's go to two months per second to really enjoy this. 
Um, they, they're sort of uh, hanging around that sun. So it seems like having the invading sun come in slower allows our sun to move towards it. And in doing so, of course, the ultimate pass occurs within the solar system instead of on its fringe. It's now passing pretty close to Jupiter, in fact. It might depend a lot on where exactly Saturn is in its orbit when that sun comes close. Neptune's orbit is definitely changing. Pluto looks like a comet now. So this invading sun has gotten Uranus already. But how about, how about the Saturn here? Pluto... Pluto's looking like that now. Its inclination has changed. Partly due to Neptune, probably. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hold on, let's slow down a bit. This is changing a bit fast. Okay, we have escape for Uranus. We have Saturn's going out. Pluto's going out. Neptune's going out. Jupiter is here. It's got a very elongated orbit now. Uranus is sort of going this way. So we've lost all of the outer planets except for Jupiter, looks like. But we'll wait a little bit to see if they somehow get recaptured or something. Best place to be for a solar flyby is the inner solar system. Well, let's see. Uh, let's check on Earth. Hold on, let's pause and check on Earth. Earth's climate, 28.3 degrees, not bad. Like uh, Aaron had said before, probably double what it used to be. The other sun has now passed, so it's now night and day normal. Um, that's an interesting color for the Sahara. It's got an orbital period of a year still. Jupiter, which used to have a 12 year period, now has a 9.8. Mars' period is about the same. And that sun is out. Uh, uh, Uranus might be back, maybe? Was wondering about that. So we'll wait a little bit before we decide on Saturn. So now, I mean, we've got the answer about, uh, I mean, I think we've got the answer uh, for the borderline case for Saturn. I think this is pretty borderline. I mean, it'll be around uh, something like going slow and passing by the orbit of Pluto. What if it was going slower but further out? What do you guys think? I'm not necessarily going to do that one, but what do you guys think? It was going slower but further out. What I want to see if uh, is if the other sun can capture a few. Doesn't seem like it can. I'm not sure. Oh wait! It just captured Uranus. Not too sure how certain that is. Saturn's on the wrong side. Saturn's gone, I think. Doesn't seem like the uh, old processor is gonna be able to keep up if I try and increase the sim rate. It's taking up half of my pro- oh, now it's taking up only a quarter of my processor. When it was red, it was taking up half my processor. I think that's about all it can do. I guess it can do four cores, but that's about it. So I know now. No, wow! It's uh, Uranus is really look at its orbit around the new sun. 
That is a serious orbit right there. I think the situation is Saturn is gone and Uranus got captured by that sun. Okay, so uh, I want proposals for what we're going to do next. Well, let's see. Let, let's send a sun really close then, maybe. And slow. Slow and close. I think that's, that's a good way to go. Let's have it go slow and close. Motion. Um, that's not bad. But I'll orbit the sun. I don't want that. So... Let's see. Let's have it uh, aimed at the orbit of Jupiter first. And we'll have it at the same speed, actually. I want to see absolute chaos. Come on. Okay, at the asteroid belt. Let's try this. Well, uh, its orbit has already changed. I aimed it at the asteroid belt, but it's it's gone on this side. This is Universe Sandbox 2, and I'm investigating what happens when you throw a sun through our solar system. And the viewers have insisted that after this test, we will do something completely different. So I want to know what you guys want to do. Uh, if you want to crash series into Mars, that's fine, but let's get a list of possibilities, and maybe we'll have a vote. And uh, votes won't cost anything in terms of struts. But uh, one possibility is crashing Ceres into Mars. Okay, we should change to orbits. Okay, well, Pluto's definitely different now. No, nothing will happen if you place Pluto between Earth and Mars. If it's in a stable orbit. It doesn't have enough mass to influence either one. Uh, you'd have to simulate it for like, you know, tens of thousands of years kind of thing. Oh, you mean Pluto gets life or something? Okay. Uh, will Pluto get life if it's placed between Earth and Mars? Okay, Pluto between Earth and Mars. Yeah, it doesn't simulate life. I'm, uh, well, I don't know what you want to see in that case, but uh, we, we can see something, whatever it does. I'm just blindly curious, you know. That's my goal here. Complete blind curiosity. We haven't even tried to incline orbits. You know, I could go at the, this uh, all day just passing little stars through our solar system to see what happens at different levels. Simulate a nebula. I don't know what that would entail, actually. Maybe, uh, maybe Code, Fanta uh, Code Fantastic, could you help with that? Simulating a nebula, I don't know. Are we talking about just plopping like tens of thousands of little rocks close to each other and hoping they form something? Yeah, come, come to think of it, Ernem, uh, Pluto's atmosphere would get blown away completely if it was closer to the sun. The sol solar wind would be much stronger. Okay, uh, Neptune has gotten flipped around. And eject. Oh, 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 shoot, 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 shoot. Too fast, too fast. Oh, come on, slow down, slow down. Uh, point 0.5. Accretion disk? Uh, you can't do that yet. Okay, uh, the other sun has captured Mercury. Oh, is that our sun? Which one's our sun? I forget. Um, hmm. Well, one of the suns has gotten Mercury and Ceres. Uh, Earth. Where are you, Earth? I think I went too fast because I was watching chat instead of this. Venus is there. I don't know what happened to Earth. Guys, I've lost Earth. No, this is actually pretty stable. Oh, uh, that's Jupiter. I think Jupiter got captured by the other sun, or this sun. Whatever, this sun is, has got Jupiter now. 
This blue line is Neptune. What's this? It's a little object that's orbiting real close, but that's just a Kuiper Belt object or some asteroid or something. Surprisingly, this time Pluto just hung out. It's not gotten flung out yet. We missed the chaos. We missed the loss of Earth. Ah, oh, that sucks. What's orbiting Neptune? Oh, no, that's just a spinning. But is the sun gonna hang out now? Is this gonna hang out in and orbit our sun? This may be a double star system now. Too bad we can't see their orbits, but maybe their trails will tell. Maybe it'll be better if we keep this sun, I think it's our sun, stable. So let's have position lock on it. Can I rewind? I, I don't think so. That'd be a good, that'd be an interesting thing, but I have to store a lot of data. Yeah, where where did where did Mars go? Oh yeah, Mars is there. Okay. Oh here's here's Earth. Okay, Earth and Mars got flung out. The inner solar system was not safe. Pluto Pluto is now flung out, it looks like, but I think it's gonna get recaptured. Neptune's still hanging around here. Venus and Vesta have Sort of complementary, really elongated orbits. Saturn actually survived. Oh, Saturn doesn't have rings? Did, uh, I guess it's not simulating its rings, so I guess that's why. This situation would suck. I don't know. Oh wait, I think, uh, well, Vesta can't quite decide whether it wants to stay or go. It has a certain beauty to it, not for Earth, of course. Earth is in trouble. Earth is a cold, cold place now. That's not what it looks like anymore. Wait a minute. Oh, climate simulation is off. So it's not really simulating the climate properly. It'd be freezing, obviously. I think right now, Uranus and Neptune are orbiting both stars. Uh, though Neptune and Uranus might both decide to go out, but... And then we've got sort of mini-systems, but they're also sort of tenuous. Definitely chaotic. No real indication that we've got a proper, bi proper binary system. Okay, I think it's sort of like this. Whatever this is. Alright, so let's have the poll. Let's see what do we want to do next. Let's see if this poll works. Alright, 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 enough of this. Alright, so I'm closing the vote. Crashing series into Mars, alright. 